On Monday, right here in Barcelona, Rakuten Symphony announced the 2.0 version of its Simware Next Generation Distributed Unit Platform that for Open RAN, the Simware platform is designed for high performance and high capacity cell sites in a distributed or centralized deployment scenario where it, it has the performance to help manage spectrum complexity and carrier aggregation. That is a roadblock facing some MNOs and their adoption of Open RAN technology. On this session to discuss more about Simware 2.0 are Raghu Hariharan, he's Chief Technology Officer at Rakuten Symphony. And we also have Uday Mukherjee, he's Intel's Senior Fellow of the Network and Edge Group. And gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Abe. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. It's an honor to have both of you uh, discuss Simware 2.0. I know there was a very, very recent announcement of that product uh, and that technology uh, tangential to that, and we want to talk about that. But before we do that, Raghu, I want to go back a little bit and talk about the relationship between Rakuten and Intel, really back to the RMI days. That's a very good question, Abe. Uh, you know, uh, our relationship with Intel is almost six years young now. I don't want to call it old. Uh, we have been building this relationship and these products on uh, Open RAN with Intel from the beginning. Uh, especially in RMI, uh, the momentum uh, got much better in 2018 when we were able to bring the, the friendly user sites in Rakuten Mobile Network operational mm -hmm. and we were able to test full Open RAN on multiple sectors and sites. That led to a, a full-fledged commercial deployment in 2019, and we went live in 2020. Mm. Uh, so the relationship has blossomed over the last uh, three years, especially as we took that 4G solution and expanded that into 5G, uh, and we uh, did an even larger deployment with 5G in 2021. Uday, anything to add? Uh, no, no, I think um, Raghu summarized it very well. Uh, uh, the six years, I mean, it is not just uh, as it is silicon partnership, also on the software side. A mm. lot of collaboration, um, Raghu, remember, on actually getting the layer one baseband on actually on a general purpose processing, you know, took a lot of, lot of work, hard work. So years of work on that one, you know, optimization between our two teams actually resulted this. And, and we solved a lot of complicated problems lot of in the initial days of especially virtualizing the layer mm -hmm. one. There were a lot of challenges. We took it upon the stride, took it as an opportunity to run a real-time workload like the, the, the layer one on general purpose uh, Intel Silicon with Linux operating system. Mm. Uh, resulted in a lot of innovation and IPR filing by both the companies. So I think it was, yeah. a, it was a very good uh, you know, relationship that we've had Absolutely. with Intel since the beginning. Since the beginning. So, Raghu, when you launched somewhere a couple of years back, as you mentioned, um, can you give us an example of a success story around that time? Sure. See, one of the challenges that we faced, uh, especially in some of the rural deployments, was that there was no fiber connectivity from an edge data center to the cell site. So, and the cell site needed to be provisioned with the DU at the cell site. And, but now, in order to do that, we had to add another box for the cell site gateway. We had to add special timing and circuitry for timing and synchronization. We had to you know, provide specialized cabinets, et cetera, et cetera. So it became quite challenging. And that led to the innovation and creation of Simware DU, the 1.0 version, mm. which integrated a large uh, number of these problems in one box. First of all, we designed a weatherized chassis. We integrated it with the club, you know, state-of-the-art timing and synchronization solution. And we built into it you know, the latest EASIC technology uh, from Intel that allowed us to do both 4G and 5G acceleration concurrently. So that was, you know, a, a big step that led towards the Simware DU 2.0. Then, yeah. what do you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I'm very proud of uh, this uh, product because I remember from day one, a lot of discussion, Raghu, Tarek, you know, component by component. I mean, there are a lot of supply chain issues as well as we integrate a lot of the platforms, you know, BMCs and elements of the we think, you know, integrated timing synchronization as Drago talked about, and within the power footprint that we have in our mind. Mm -hmm. Thermal challenges, we solved uh, with, uh, uh, you know, Rakuten's thermal team and our team in Bangalore. Lot of late night hours work on this design. Mm -hmm. And the product is awesome. And, and in some sense, you know, the learnings that we had from Simware DU 1.0 is what led us to design Simware DU 2.0 yeah. 
it, it, it's almost like we tripled the capacity in SimWare DU 2.0 and, and that's the box that we are introducing in this MWC. So, and continuing with that, with that thought and managing the cost and complexity of SimWare, or of, of the DU, tell us how SimWare 2.0 sort of plays in that space. Sure. So, uh, essentially, uh, telecommunication workloads and, in, and essentially deployments are defined by three Ps, price, performance, and power. So you have, you have to constantly optimize the price per cell, the power consumed per cell, and performance in terms of how many sector carriers you can aggregate into one processor. So SimWare DU 2.0 addresses all the three. It gives you the best uh, power per cell uh, from a power consumption perspective. It gives you the best performance because we can aggregate 4G and 5G large number of carriers in one processor, integrated with the VBoost technology. Mm. Uh, where the FEC is inside of the processor itself. And that gives us the best price per cell uh, metric. Absolutely. Yeah, actually that is a, a big innovation that uh, in the generation 1.0, um, Raghu talked about that one, you know, the ESIC, structured ASIC based acceleration. Yeah. The PCI Express acceleration. Now we don't need that. It's all integrated within the chip, the SOC. In our latest Sapphire Rapid E with VRAN Boost. Or is the Gen 4, you know, Xeon with the VRAN Boost, mm. which is there powering the, um, the laser Dakota and similar 2.0, mm. which is absolutely brilliant. And the design, the size has gone down. I saw that thing, you know, and it's, it's really turning heads. Actually, it's there in our Intel booth as well. Mm. And there's a huge yeah, crowd puller. Uh, I saw that. Raghu, did you want to add something? Yeah. So essentially, what, has, what we learned is that there are a large number of discrete components that need one more level of integration, integration. Into, the, into, the, into the chip. And we can call it an SOC, it's a, it's a system on a chip, mm. which does IO, it, it does timing and synchronization, it does FEC, and it does the baseband processing, and it can be virtualized. I mean, it facilitates yes. the workload to be, to be deployed exactly. as containers. So it's like a, a, a step in the right direction to, to densify the next generation of wireless networks and technologies. Mm. So could you go in a little more detail of the, the two SimWare models? One is the indoor, one the outdoor that was mentioned uh, uh, yesterday. I believe that event was yesterday. Raghu, we'll start with you on those. Sure. Uh, I mean, we have multiple deployment configurations. Uh, one where, where the DU is exposed to the elements. It has to, uh, it has to be tolerant of low temperatures, high temperatures, wind, et cetera, et cetera. In some cases, and in some deployments, the, the fan may be OK. But in some cases, the fan may not be OK. So we have built uh, the SimWare DU with a weatherized chassis. That's the first configuration. But we have also built the SimWare DU 2.0 in a bladed architecture, in a sled architecture, that can be put in a data center as a mountable rack, where the it's not exposed to the elements. It's in a temperature-controlled data center facility. And, the, and we can re realize the same benefits in both the form factors. Mm. Do you want to add? No, I think this, that's brilliant. Software and everything stays the same. If you don't need the fans, if it's all within an you know, indoor, why do you actually add the extra power and extra cost? Mm. So it's a brilliant design. So of course, uh, with telcos rolling anything out these days, there's an issue of economics. Um, so again, SimWare 2.0 plays a, um, a role in that space. Again, can you just maybe illustrate that for the audience as to how that works? And as also energy management as well. Of course. So let me start with the latter. Yep. So energy management, uh, you know, it's not just about the, the DU, but in this webcast, we'll focus on the DU power savings. Sapphire Rapids allows us to aggregate very large number of cells on a single processor. That itself reduces the power consumed per cell. Number two, Sapphire Rapids introduces uh, some unique uh, power saving mechanisms where the application based on telemetry can put certain cores into a into the one of the sleep states. That is a revolutionary you know addition to the Sapphire Rapids because now from the application we can control the processor C and P states and use the processor more efficiently. Mm. And number three, I think working closely with Intel, we have worked on building this enhanced BBU pool scheduler, right. which allows us to utilize the hyper threads most effectively. So now we can place different types of workloads on the same hyper thread. We can scale up and scale down the hyper threads as a function of CPU load. We can 
uh, collapse or uh, you know uh, share the workload for different hyper threads to do different types of processing mm -hmm. so all these aspects allow us to get very good energy sustainability from the processor do you do anything uh, yeah i mean, I mean um, you know this is the power of what an application can do mm -hmm. i mean uh, generation before you, we depend on a lot of os operating system governors to transition to different sleep states and stuff now the power is on the application and the intelligent application like what ragu and the team built for uh, for uh, rakutan i mean that's uniquely taking advantage of this mm -hmm. you know past it so this kudos to you guys yeah. what you did so so all these steps these are small steps towards the larger objective of reducing the cost, cost per cell yeah. so by doing all these innovations we are able to reduce the uh, effective ro cost per cell that a operator would pay mm. So what would be the conversation this time next year, if we're talking about Senware 2.0, or maybe another version, um, is, it, is it still talking about reducing TCO and, and that type of issue? Um, I think uh, uh, Open RAN is going through uh, a, a phase, right? The first few years of Open RAN was, there was a lot of unknown. How are you going to do this? How are you going to run real-time workloads on Linux? Yeah. In this MWC, I feel that that is, behind the door and now we have open ran adoption how do we diversify the ecosystem how do we build uh, you know different types of solutions on this open ran technology i think the next mwc uh, i foresee that to be more about how do you make it more uh, ai and ml driven mm -hmm. based on intelligent algorithms that can take decisions by themselves so i think that is how the the evolution would happen in the next MWC and onwards. Yeah, actually, um, a software-defined platform like what um, is built in Simuel, it's a purely software-driven radio. There are a lot of um, intelligence you can build in. Power management, one of them. And the AI ML that Rago talked about, I already see a lot of applications being built, exposing, taking the channel data and building, you know, a lot of value-added elements on top of it. You'll see more and more. I mean, TCO discussion is always going to be there. Yeah. You know? But I think you will see more and more value-added software innovation on top of a platform like this. Interesting. So the Rocket and Intel relationship continues. Continues. It'll be seven years young this time next year. Right. Uh, it was good to have both of you. Of course, you know, a big announcement here in Barcelona on Simware 2.0. So we'll, I'm sure we'll talk further about that. But at least we get some type of dis or launching pad discussion anyway, uh, talking about that today. So we appreciate your time, Raghu. For, Thank uh, you, Nice Abe. meeting you, by the way. Nice meeting you, too. And Uday, nice meeting you as well. I know Thank we've you. met before. Yeah. I've, I've worked with Intel for now 12 years. Yes, so at I'm some sure. point, we've yes. run into one another. <laughs> But uh, it's good to have you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you.